Now, how does God prompt men to intercede? How does God prompt men to a place of intercession? Because for many of us, we just keep living our lives like that until we are prompted. Number one prompting, and this one is general, and that is the key prompting by love. God prompts men to intercede by love. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 4 says, The, 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 the love of God constrained us. The love of God constrained us. Intercession by love. The love of Christ is in that love constrained us. In the book of John, you know, Jesus when he was living here, he was interceding, he was to the living. And you know, you know, with all what they chose to do, Jesus prayed. John chapter 17, uh, you read verse 20. He said, I'm not praying for my disciples alone, I'm praying for us. Many will be living me. John 17, 20, because of coming away from the world. So we interceded by love. When Jesus was being crucified on the cross in Luke 23, 34, Father, forgive me. Father, that was intercession. You know what it means? People are killing you and you are praying. God forgive me. So they do not know what they do. That was an intercession that was prompted by God. Some of you may say, I have to acknowledge he was Jesus now. Why won't he forgive them? A man living Stephen. Acts chapter 7, verse 16. Stephen was dying. That was his last, those were his last words. And that was his TV cried aloud. Say, Father, do not judge them. Do not count this against them. He cried aloud. You are not crying. He might be crying. The Bible says he cried aloud. You are not saying, Oh God, come and save me. He cried aloud. Say, Father, do not hold this man guilty. He died in that city for those who were killing him. That was love, sir. No wonder in verse 55, Bible says, when Stephen looked up steadily to heaven, he saw Jesus standing. And I was asking myself, how God, the Bible says, he seated. When he rose, when he was coronated, he, 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 he is seated. The only time, that's the only place in the Bible after his resurrection, the Bible says he was standing. He was, he was giving a lousy welcome to a general that was coming home. A worthy general. Father, do not count this against them. That was intercession by love. Abraham did the same for Lot. You know, and for Sodom. When Lot parted, Lot was like more like an arrogant boy. He looked. He was very, very much in haste to take the greener pastures. He didn't even say, oh, my uncle, you are my elder. Now you are here. If Abraham was like a father to Lot, Lot would have said, oh, my father, just take one side and go. The Bible says he cited the plain of Sodom. He saw that it was green. He was looking attractive because they were headers. And Bible says, Lot took that direction. He went and pitched his tent towards Sodom. Lord didn't know that Sodom was marked for destruction. Abraham was his spiritual father. He was not struggling. And after the Lord had parted from Abraham, God told him, I said, look, northward, southward, eastward, everywhere, everywhere, Lord, everywhere, he said, I'm giving to you. Lord went and pitched his tent to us. Abraham was no one. Lord's men were having problems with Abraham's men. You know, when Abraham knew that God was going to see him, God told Abraham, Abraham began to stand. Abraham would have said, hey, that boy, after all, he's, he's, he's a stupid boy now. She, she is very arrogant. Now God will teach him a lesson. You know, some of us do that. Uh, God, God is it, 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 it is my God that has got him. Uh, let him be there. So I told him. But Abraham understood. See, Lord. And you know one thing, Abraham didn't just intercede for so uh, for Lot. Abraham knew how wicked Sodom was. And Gomorrah, but he stood with God. What if you find 50 righteous men? And he kept him that seed until he came to them. That was the intercession of God. Moses did the same. When the children of Israel were against him, they were carrying stone. At some point, Moses was praying for them. In the book of Exodus, Moses said, Lord, these people, if you will not pardon them, no, God told Moses, God said, allow me, let me destroy these people. So I will make him a new generation from him. And if, uh, Moses would have said, ah, and let me make a name for myself, a new generation, beautiful. These people are rebellious, father, deal with them. Moses told intercession by he said, God, is it of the strongest people remove my name from you? You know what that means? He placed his eternity on the line. Not just his life, it was eternity. He didn't say, Lord, kill me. Killing him would have been a, an easy one. But he said, remove my name. Just blot my name from you. Have you come to that point of standing in the gap for somebody? And you say, Lord, if you must save this person, that's the rest of He put God in the right corner. How will I be able to this man? And God had to put him. And he says, God,
There are men that can be godly, not godly repented. God repented. <laughs> because of a man's resolution, he blessed his eternity. That was love, sir. They feel like he was feeling the belly. They were so annoying. Several times they wanted to kill Moses in the They were so adamant. All the miracles they saw. Moses would have just said God. And they know that what God told Moses, it was possible God was testing Moses, sir. <laughs> the God cannot break his cover. It was possible God was testing him. But when God saw the heart of that man, no wonder no one to have said he was the only testing. God saw his heart, God said, I know God must have told himself this man has a God. 